For thousands of years, ancient cultures everywhere knew the Earth was a flat, motionless plane in the center of the universe, based off the observations of the true world around them. For instance, the stars of the heavens appear to be revolving above our heads, and water is always flat, so the oceans must be flat, and the stars must revolve around us like our God-given senses indicate. Our ancestors observed the world and based their conclusions off what they were seeing, but then something changed. Psychopaths began to gain power and control over science and changed our reality from observing the world through the scientific method to a faith-based religion entirely dependent on the system. Through brainwashing institutions like school, subjecting innocent children to blindly accept fallacies as truth, through televisions and TV programming showing Freemasons landing on the moon, these powerful psychopaths with bloodlines handed down through the ages have removed mankind from the center of the universe, disregarding our own human senses as the true reality of the world we live upon. They have removed God from the picture, placing humans as the accidental coincidence and product of evolution from monkeys with no purpose in our lives, disconnecting us from our divine origins of intelligent design. We are convinced through lying manipulators that our ancestors were stupid and just didn't know what we know today. The truth is, however, we create the very realities of our human existence. The earth is flat. We have been lied to, and we have been enslaved. From birth, we are taught to mock and ridicule the very idea of earth being the flat center of our universe like our eyes clearly show us. But instead, take the gospel of Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye as the ultimate truth that we are meaningless apes created by accident. I beg to differ. I was once a believer in the heliocentric ball earth religion, but then I was ridiculed for questioning it just as many others have been. Slaves think they're smart because they take the word of liars who clearly manipulate them. The fact of the matter is, however, real science supports the flat, motionless earth, while false, unprovable pseudoscience has enslaved humanity on a ball. There are many scientific proofs of the flat earth. The horizon, which derived from the word horizontal, always rises to the eye level and remains perfectly flat at 360 degrees around the observer. On a globe, the converging point of the horizon on the ball earth would drop as the observer rose higher and higher. Yet this is never the case. High altitude balloon footage shows earth with zero curvature up to 120,000 feet. NASA and the cabal of Freemasonic sun worshippers say that one starts seeing Earth's curve at about 30,000 feet, yet these balloons go four times higher and spot no curve. Someone's lying, and it's probably the space agency with the deceptive snake tongue as their logo. Many brainwashed ball earthers claim that they have seen the curvature from the ground. Oh really? That's very mysterious, considering most prophets of the Ball Earth religion say that a person cannot begin seeing curvature until 30,000 feet high, which contradicts these Ball Earthers' claims. The horizontal horizon is an obvious proof the Earth is flat. No curvature has ever been detected other than GoPro fisheye lenses. The videos with fisheye lenses show an artificial curve created by the camera, which begins before the camera even lifts off the ground. No curvature has ever been seen, because Earth doesn't curve. Did you know that the word horizon stems from horizontal? The definition of horizontal is as follows. Parallel to the plane of the horizon, at right angles to the vertical. Synonyms, level, flat, plane, smooth, even. Alright, it's called a horizon, not a curvizon. 
just our common sense, everyday perception of the Earth, it is flat as far as we can tell. Uh, it is motionless as far as we can tell. And everything in the sky is revolving around us as far as we can tell. If nobody told us otherwise, we'd logically assume that the Earth was flat, motionless, with everything in the sky revolving around us. And you can prove that this is the case as well, for instance, with the horizon. As you rise up, no matter how high you go on the top of Mount Everest, or if you go in a balloon higher and higher, as far as 20 miles up and higher, we've gotten independent balloons have gone up with cameras. The horizon remains flat all the way around and rises to the eye of the camera all the way up. Now, if the Earth were a ball, no matter how big, the horizon is said to be the curvature of the ball. So as you rose up, the horizon would stay where it, uh, where it was, and you'd have to look down if you're in a hot air balloon, down further and further as you rose up and up, and the horizon would be below you. But in fact, as high as any non-NASA, RASA, or other Freemasonic Space Agency has ever shown us, as far as any independent camera has ever gone up with an independent rocket or a balloon, as far as 20 miles uh, up, totally flat and rises to the eye of the observer. So that's one proof. One of the best proofs of the flat Earth is water. The natural physics and properties of water and liquids is to remain flat and level. If dammed up then released, the nature of all liquids is to flow out in every direction until it has found its level. This is why we have sea level and water level. Water forming to the exterior of any shape can be observed nowhere in nature, yet we are convinced this is how our world is. Water curving and bending around a tilting, wobbling, spinning ball due to a magical Freemasonic pulling force can be observed nowhere in the natural world and cannot be proven with any form of valid, repeatable experiments, yet we are told this is our world. However, water remaining perfectly flat and level can be shown, tested, repeated, and proved to be the case. We are told Earth is 70% water, so if the nature of all liquids is to remain flat and level, at least 70% of Earth must be flat and level. Whether from a cup, to a bucket, to a bathtub, to a pool, to a lake, or to an ocean, water never curves but will always maintain its level. Water is another obvious and easy proof the Earth is flat. The surface, horizontal and flat, all right? So again, I'm demonstrating these things on a table. If I try to demonstrate it on a ball, it just falls off. So all practical demonstrations happen within a container or a level surface because it is the only place we can get the water to stay. Right. Oh, oh, we got a wee bit here that's running away now. I can't even get a wee bit here just to stay on the top of the ball. Running off, okay? Running off, seeking its level. Water. It's always fucking level, okay? Another great flat earth proof is the ability to see objects from incredible distances. If earth were truly a spinning ball, objects would disappear over the line of sight at the horizon due to the earth's curve. Yet that never occurs. The Statue of Liberty stands at 326 feet and can be seen up to 60 miles away but on a globe, the statue would be 2,074 feet below the horizon. But another one worth mentioning that people be familiar with is the Statue of Liberty. It stands 326 feet above sea level, and on a clear day can be seen as far as 60 miles away. Now if the Earth was a globe at the dimensions that they give us, that would put Lady Liberty at an impossible 2,074 feet below the horizon. The Chicago skyline can be seen up to 60 miles away across Lake Michigan. At this distance on a globe, the skyline should be 2,400 feet below the line of sight. To keep you asleep inside the deception, the brainwashing news channels 
quickly stated that this was just a mirage. However, the skyline was facing right side up, unlike a superior mirage, which would be a hazy illusion. It's until I found this photo, Ranmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Chicago's beyond the horizon, should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky up in space. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. It's not a mirage. It's just flat. Get over it. Ships disappearing over the horizon has been a ball earth proof for hundreds of years, but it can be easily debunked. The claim is that ships disappear because they go over the curve of the earth, yet when the observer pulls out a high powered zoom camera, one can easily bring the entirety of the ship back into view. On a ball, this would be completely impossible because no matter how far the camera can zoom in, the ship would be out of the line of sight due to going over the supposed curve. Ships sailing out of sight has nothing to do with the curvature of the Earth, but rather is a result of human perspective and how far our eyes can see. That is why cameras can bring a whole ship back into view. Just another proof that the Earth could not be a spinning globe, but instead is a flat plane. A popular belief that is constantly used as proof for the globe is boats disappearing behind the horizon. But this is actually just an optical illusion. Humans can only see so far. But with super zoom cameras like the Nikon P900, or even just a telescope or some binoculars, you can bring back ships and boats that have appeared to go over the supposed curve of the Earth. Lighthouses prove the Earth is flat, and the light can be seen for miles away without being hidden due to the curvature of the Earth. The Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England stands at 180 feet and can be seen up to 42 miles away, but on the ball Earth, the light should be hidden 996 feet below the horizon. First one you have is the Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England. It's 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. Why can you still see it? The Ekero Light on the south coast of Norway stands 154 feet high and remains visible up to 28 miles, where its light should be 230 feet below the line of sight. The Cape El Agulas Lighthouse in South Africa is 33 feet high, standing 238 feet above sea level, and can be seen up to 50 miles, which, if the Earth was a globe, the light would fall 1,400 feet below the horizon. The lighthouse at Port Said, Egypt, stands 60 feet high and is visible at 58 miles away, yet it should be hidden at an astounding 2,182 feet below the horizon. If the Earth really was a globe, these lighthouses should not be seen from these incredible distances, yet they are, which is only consistent with the flat Earth.
the longest bridges in the world show no curvature for miles, which would be impossible if the Earth were a globe 25,000 miles in circumference. The Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge in China is the longest bridge in the world, stretching 102.4 miles long and should have about a 7,000 foot drop in curvature, yet not a single inch of curvature can be measured. The Donghai Bridge in China is 20.2 miles long and should show a drop of 272 feet, but no curvature can be seen. The Lake Poncher Train Causeway in Metairie, Louisiana is 23.87 miles long and is entirely level with 380 feet of missing curvature. The Tianjin Grand Bridge is 70.6 miles long, which should show a drop of 3,324 feet, yet zero curvature can be detected. Most bridges are not designed with the Earth's curvature taken into consideration, but the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York was designed with the Earth's curve taken into account and is 13,700 feet long. But the water beneath the bridge still remains perfectly flat and level, consistent with the flat Earth. No curvature can be measured or detected, proving Earth is not a globe. The Bar de Ecrins Mountain in France is elevated at 13,458 feet and can be seen from up to 273 miles away. A photo taken at 273 miles away by Pic de Feinstrels shows no curvature where the mountain should be hidden. Instead, the entire mountain can be seen and zero curvature can be detected. Okay, so... Um, since this is all in meters, let me convert this to feet. 4102. That's 13458. Again, that's what uh, Bill said. 13458 was the elevation for the distant mountain range. And from this other place right here, which is at 2820. And just to confirm, yep, 92.51 and change, so 92.52, let's just say, round it up. That's the altitude of the um, photographer. So we go to, let's just go ahead and copy that. Go to the Earth Curve Calculator here, everybody likes to use. And let's say that's the um, height of the observer. 9251.969 and the distance at 440 kilometers away let's do this as kilometers and miles 273.403 273.403 so what is supposed to be hidden According to this, the horizon is at 117.799969 miles away. According to this, if you're here, this is at that altitude, your horizon is going to be at 117.8 miles away. And the target over here should be 16,140.1805 below your ability to see it. So, let's do something else here. We'll use a little calculator here and see what the difference is. 16140.1805. Subtract the height of the mountain, which was again 13,458. 0 0.005. So if I'm understanding this correctly, then the top of that mountain range should be 2,682.1755 feet below the curvature. In other words, about a half mile below the ability of the observer to see it. 
273 miles away. It's mind-blowing. From point A to point B, the shortest car ride would be eight hours. The Grand Canyon is 277 miles long and covers an area of over 1,900 miles. If the Earth was a globe, then there should be thousands of feet of curvature, yet no curvature can be measured. Australia's longest and flattest road is the Erie Highway, stretching across 90 miles. On the ball earth, there should be over 5,000 feet of curvature, yet not an inch can be detected. Surely if the earth curved, such a flat road would not exist, yet it does, and proves the flat earth. You might find this one funny. Kansas has been proven to be flatter than a pancake. A study showed that on a scale where 1.0 is completely flat, the flatness of a pancake is 0.957, while Kansas is 0.9997. That's flat. This means that across Kansas, at the span of 400 miles, there should be about 20 miles of curvature Considering the size of Kansas as a U.S. state, there should be plenty of Earth's curve to be measured, yet instead, it is perfectly flat and level. The Black Rock Desert in Nevada covers an area of 1,000 miles and is 100 miles long. At this distance, there should be about 7,000 feet of curvature, but not a single inch can be detected. Railways and train tracks also lend support for the Flat Earth and debunk the globe. The London and Northwestern Railway is 180 miles long, stretching from London to Liverpool in a straight line. If the Earth were a ball, this railway would be curving at an arc at an incredible height of 5,640 feet, which is not the case. Engineers and surveyors make no allowance for curvature and the idea of train tracks having to be designed to curve with the Earth's rotundity is preposterous. It is already hard enough to make railroads curve left and right, yet we are supposed to believe that railroads are also designed to bend over the curve of the Earth? Railroads are not designed under those circumstances. Therefore, this is yet another proof the Earth is not a globe. Uh, canals, tunnels, and railroads are never built with curvature in mind whatsoever. That's not necessary. And if there were, then the, their plans would be off, in fact. I've got quotes in my book from railroad engineers and canal builders saying how <laughs> it's absolutely, it's hard enough for railroads to turn make curves uh, horizontally, let alone if we were on a ball and railroads would have to be curving up on the ball and they give examples of different railroads over the earth and how long they are and how much curvature they'd have to be ascending and how it would be so impossible for the trains to, to be able to go up this curve because trains are made to be on a level. They just can't, they just can't operate that way. <laughs> so there's a lot, of, a lot of proofs like that. The Sala de Uni also known as the Bolivian Salt Flats, is the world's largest salt flat. It expands and remains perfectly flat and level for over 4,000 square miles. There should be an exponential amount of curvature seen, yet not an inch can be measured. Flat places like this prove that Earth could not be a sphere, but flat and level.
the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah cover an area of 40 miles where on a globe there should be about a thousand feet of curvature. Instead, the salt flats remain flat and level, consistent with the flat earth. The Suez Canal is a hundred miles long, connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Gulf of Suez on the Red Sea. The Suez Canal remains entirely uninterrupted by locks and is an astonishing proof of flat earth. The canal was dug just 26 miles along a horizontal datum line with no curvature taken into consideration and runs perfectly parallel and level the whole way through. The Great Canal of China was said to be 700 miles long and was dug without Earth's curvature considered as the Chinese knew of Earth as a stationary plane. Investigate canals and canal systems and how they operate. Canals are built level. Many heliocentrists have convinced us that the Earth beneath our feet is not stationary and motionless as it appears, but instead it is constantly spinning. Have you ever felt the Earth spin? Again, this religious cult demands that you throw out and disregard your senses to maintain the silly belief that you are on a spinning ball. However, there are some fatal flaws to this fallacious theory that light must be shed upon. For instance, every experiment in history that made an attempt to prove the Earth's motion has failed, such as the Michelson-Morley experiment. Albert Michelson and Edward Morley tried passing light through two pathways, one at the angle of the supposed Earth's motion and the other at the right angles to its motion. The light traveling with the Earth's motion should have taken longer to return than the light traveling at the right angles, yet no difference was ever detected, even after repeating it multiple times. This failure to detect Earth's alleged motion would go down as a remarkable proof of the stationary motionless Earth. The fact that no motion can be detected in any experiment or even with our natural senses is very bizarre because we are told that Earth spins over a thousand miles per hour, circles the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, the solar system is traveling at 500,000 miles per hour, with the Milky Way galaxy hurtling at an incredible 670 million miles per hour. The fact that no experiment could detect any of this motion and humans cannot feel any motion at all is an astounding proof that Earth is not moving. If the Earth was really a spinning ball, pilots would constantly have to change and correct their altitudes downwards to prevent the airplane from flying off straight into outer space. The artificial horizon in an airplane is based off a gyroscope, which is designed to always remain level and upright under any circumstance. No matter how tilted or curved the surface is, the gyroscope would remain upright. So if an airplane began following the curvature of the Earth, then the artificial horizon would begin to roll backwards. Yet, this never occurs, therefore proving airplanes fly in the air above a plane. If a pilot is, uh, is flying around the curve of the Earth, then it sh he should be dipping the nose down um, every, every five minutes. He should be dipping the nose down to, to stay around the curve. But the thing that really um, uh, got me interested was, as you say, the gyroscope. In, in a plane there is a, um, an artificial horizon, okay, and it's based on a gyroscope. And if you spin a gyroscope um, on a surface, it will want to stay upright. You can twist and tilt the surface as much as you like, the gyroscope will stay upright. So, if a plane has a gyroscope and it starts um, following the curve of the Earth, the gyroscope would stay upright, which means your, the uh, um, artificial horizon will start to, to roll backwards, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's absolute proof that a plane flies over a flat surface rather than a curved one. If the Earth was truly spinning eastwards at over a thousand miles per hour, airplanes traveling 500 miles per hour eastwards would never arrive at their destinations before the Earth comes speeding up from behind. Meanwhile, 
an airplane traveling westwards would arrive at twice the speed in half the time. Yet, this is never observed. Airplanes landing on runways would be practically impossible with the Earth's 1,000 mile per hour spin. Heliocentrists explain away these fallacies by stating that the mysterious force of gravity holds the entire atmosphere stuck to the Earth's spin, like Velcro. This nonsensical belief, however, can be easily debunked by birds, bugs, clouds, rain, smoke, and planes, which behave differently than they would if the Earth was spinning over a thousand miles per hour. Airplanes fly freely in all manner of directions above the flat, motionless Earth, which can be observed and proven to be the case. Ball believers often claim gravity magically and inexplicably drags the entire lower atmosphere of the Earth in perfect synchronization up to some undetermined height where this progressively faster spinning atmosphere gives way to the non-spinning, non-gravitized, non-atmosphere of infinite vacuum space. Such nonsensical theories are debunked, however, by rain, fireworks, birds, bugs, clouds, smoke planes and projectiles, all of which would behave very differently if both the ball earth and its atmosphere were constantly spinning eastward at a thousand miles per hour. Gravity is the Masonic key to holding the very foundations of this sun cult together. Freemason Sir Isaac Newton convinced the world that instead of objects falling due to the laws of density and buoyancy, rather objects fell due to a magical pulling force called gravity. We are told that gravity is the reason water curves around the ball Earth, and keeps us stuck from flying off from Earth's breakneck speed. Of course, this force can be observed nowhere in the natural world, and cannot be tested and proven in any form of experiments. Imagine a force that is just strong enough to hold oceans and people stuck to the Earth, yet is just weak enough to allow butterflies and airplanes to fly freely in all directions. Gravity is also what allows moons to orbit planets, and planets to orbit stars. Gravity seems to pick and choose which functions it desires to perform. Either gravity should cause Earth to crash into the sun, or orbit the sun. Either gravity should cause people to stick to the Earth, or orbit the Earth. If you try spinning a wet tennis ball, the water will fly off in every direction. No matter how many times repeated or tested, water will never form to the exterior shape of the tennis ball, because that defies the natural physics of water. Of course, the Masonic heliocentrist have an explanation for this. They claim that the reason we can't observe water or small objects being pulled or attracted to larger objects, such as a ball, is simply because gravity only works at planetary scales. In other words, Gravity cannot be observed anywhere on Earth because it only works with giant objects such as planets or stars. Again, your common sense and logic has been explained away and you must blindly believe that what you are being told is true. Gravity is unobservable, untestable, unrepeatable, and unprovable, which defies the laws of science and which claims must be observable, testable, repeatable, and provable. Believing in a theory that can't be proven, but must require blind faith for its existence, is beyond foolish. Gravity is unprovable pseudoscience. However, the laws of density and buoyancy explain the natural world around us, and can be proven. If an object is heavier or denser than the air surrounding it, it will fall to the ground. If an object is lighter than the air surrounding it, it will rise, like a helium balloon. This is due to the natural laws of density, causing objects to fall, and buoyancy, causing objects to rise. If you drop a feather, an object just slightly denser than air, it will slowly float away and descend to the ground. If you drop a bowling ball, an object greatly heavier than air, it will instantly fall to the ground. This isn't because gravity prefers bowling balls over feathers, but rather objects fall to the ground based on density and buoyancy. Unlike gravity, 
the laws of density and buoyancy can be observed and proven through experiments, and is another proof of flat earth. Polaris is the one star in the night sky that has not moved for thousands of years. This is an observable, testable fact that can be proven. Polaris is the star that sits directly above the North Pole, and the fixed stars revolve in perfect circles around the center point of the flat Earth. The word planet, derived from the Old English planet, and the Greek word planetai, which meant wanderer or wandering. The ancients knew planets as wandering stars because they appeared to be stars that wandered around the sky in their own unique paths, different from the fixed stars, circling Polaris in their fixed positions. This is further proof that it is not us revolving around the heavenly bodies, but rather it is the stars and heavenly bodies that revolve above us, proving the geocentric model. It is not observable, provable, or even scientific to claim that thousands of years ago, Polaris moved and the other stars changed positions as the center of rotation. If Earth really was a spinning ball, we would never observe the same stars every night circling around the same pole star, but instead, we would see different stars and constellations each night as we fly through the universe. Every night we should see a new set of stars, yet this never occurs, and the same stars have been seen for thousands of years circling above our geocentric flat plane. The North Pole was the magnetic monopole center point of the flat Earth, with Polaris, the North Pole star, situated directly above. Polaris was the only motionless star in the heavens, with all the other constellations revolving perfect circles over the Earth every night. Directly above the axis of spin is the pole star, Polaris. Okay, um, directly over the North Pole. And um, we're told that the reason that all the stars spin around the, uh, the, the North Star is because the, the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So why do we see perfect circles? You know, because that's the slowest speed. <laughs> and, and yet the, the Earth is moving 67 times faster that way and 600 times faster that way. So you should see the stars do all sorts of strange mo uh, motions, but you don't. You only see them make these perfect circles. The sun is not 93 million miles away like what we have been told, but by using sextants and plane trigonometry, it is revealed that the sun is local and much closer to the Earth. This explains why high altitude balloon footage shows hot spots on clouds as a direct result of a local sun and proof that the sun is not 93 million miles away. When looking up to the sky, one can observe that the sun is circling above our heads and is smaller than what we have been told. The moon, on the other hand, is not 238,000 miles away, but our eyes can clearly observe it to be much closer than what the Freemasons at NASA would have us believe. Both luminaries, just as described by the ancients, revolved above us as they appear with the sun being warm, drying, and preservative, while the moon is cold, damp, and putrefying. Experiments have been done proving the different effects that moonlight has on food and plants than sunlight. When looking up at the sky, the moon appears to be a translucent, transparent, luminous body of light and not a solid spherical rock reflecting the sun's light as we've been told. Repeatable tests have been conducted showing that moonlight is colder than the shade, unlike sunlight, which is warmer than the shade. People have taken pictures of the blue sky and even stars being seen through the moon. This would be impossible if the moon was a solid rock and not a luminary. Even though the sun and moon appear to circle above us and support the flat earth, we should not be looking up to the sky to prove the shape of the earth beneath our feet. I tried to avoid using the sun, moon, stars, and even NASA's lies as scientific evidence of the flat earth, 
but there were some scientific proofs that I felt were necessary to discuss. The sun and moon are very interesting, although I felt that these magnificent luminaries do not offer absolute tangible proof of the flat earth besides the fact that we can use our eyes to observe them as local heavenly bodies. Instead of looking up to the sky to prove the shape of the earth beneath our feet, we should use the earth to prove the shape of the earth. By the way, I feel it's important to mention, NASA does not have any evidence of the globe earth, and they don't have any real images of earth from space. Data visualizer and designer Robert Simmon has admitted that the blue marble images are all photoshopped. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Don't even get me started on the other so-called images of other planets. For God's sakes, they put Pluto the dog on Pluto the planet. Seriously. Of course, when looking at the evidence, NASA obviously never made it to the moon, and they sure as hell aren't going to Mars. If you want to see mountains of more proof of the flat Earth, then head on over to Eric Dubay's channel and watch 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. Or check out ODD Reality. He has some fire videos. And be sure to check out Beyond the Imaginary Curve. There are tons of more proofs of the flat Earth, and there is no evidence of the globe Earth. The religious cult of heliocentrism has brainwashed us from birth to believe we live on a spinning ball and reject our flat earth reality. The amount of scientific evidence supporting flat earth is astounding. If the earth were not flat, but instead a tilting spinning ball, then why would there be no evidence of the globe, but so much evidence for the flat earth? This is because the earth is obviously flat, and everyone can prove it for themselves. This deception has been played out for hundreds of years by the elite secret societies and psychopaths ruling our world. They want you to feel insignificant. They want you to think that you're an evolved monkey on a speck going nowhere. They want you to feel like your life has no meaning and no purpose. Our flat earth truth has been hidden from us our whole lives and now it's time for humanity to wake up and escape this globalist cult that has enslaved us. I've woken up to the lies, and I'm ready to fight back. Now, my only question is, are you ready? insane people for insane objects and mm. objectives. That's right, yeah. I mean, our eyes and experience tell us the Earth is flat and motionless and everything in the sky revolves around us. But when we cease to believe our own eyes and experience, we have to prostrate ourselves at the feet of these very pseudo-scientists who are blinding us. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control again. ball earth chaotically darting through infinite space where eventually our sun will die out 
creates the ultimate mind control. This set of beliefs leads to a mentality that nothing matters and everything including you are nothing more than an accident. This is far from the truth. You are very powerful and the ruling class is scared of your potential. Anybody can put on paper what our government and the American government, etc., and the Russian, Chinese, what they are actually trying to do, you know, and how, what they think they're doing. Mm. I'd be very pleased to know what they think they're doing. I think they're all insane. All I know is, as far as we can tell, the water is completely flat and the land is flat, other than hills, valleys, and mountains. Over a long period of uh, space, there's no convex or concave curvature. It's totally flat. everything in the heavens revolves gives a special importance and significance not only to earth but to us humans the most intelligent among the intelligent designers designs 